I'm scared. Honestly. It's Photoshop versus Procreate. Here I've got my iPad and Apple Pencil for today's Photoshop painting. I have never used Photoshop before. It's gonna be my first Photoshop painting. I'm gonna use my husband's six pen tablet. It's a Deco LV pen tablet. Help. I created a sketch in Procreate app. There's a lot of new information to explore today, so I thought at least I'm gonna let myself make sketch the usual way. I think I'm gonna create a canvas in each of the apps and then import a sketch to these canvases because I want to check the creating canvas menu first. Opening Photoshop. Welcome to Photoshop. Thank you, sir. Creating canvas and uh, <laughs> I'm kind of anxious already. I immediately see that I need some help with that to better understand what's going on here. For now, I just don't change anything, only the canvas size. But you know, at this very first stage, I realized that I'm already being biased. Before even trying the app, I already decided for myself that Photoshop is very complicated and now that's all I see. I'm like trying to find the proofs that I'm right. I realized it when I started to create a canvas in Procreate app and I've noticed that there's also a lot of settings and honestly, I didn't even know it there and I have absolutely no idea how to work with that too. That's a big part of the experience. The before even trying something opinion, that's the reason I haven't watched any reviews or anything about Photoshop before trying it out myself. But unfortunately, Photoshop has this reputation, so I couldn't completely ignore all the info I've heard about it, about it being very complicated, but also about it being a pro level app. So I'm trying to be, to stay open minded, but sometimes it's just, it's just me being biased. After I creating a canvas in Photoshop, I took some time to create my workspace. I want layers in the color wheel to be somewhere here, brush and brush settings too. That's my essential set of tools. I got used to it with Procreate. In Procreate app, all these can be found at the right side of a screen. Since any iPad is going to be smaller than potential screen you work on with Photoshop, tools in Procreate app aren't placed right on screen, it's hidden in menu. As a first step, I filled the whole shape with one color. Let's see how exactly I did it. First of all, I make a sketch layer to be a linear burn layer, then I create a layer below my sketch. Then I pick needed color and go to selection tools menu. There's some different tools, including lasso. In Procreate, it's called freehand section tool. I outline needed area to fill it with a color. I can manually drop the color to select the area or I could also pick the color fill button. It fills selected area automatically after you lock the shape to the first point. While working with Procreate Lasso tool, I can take my hand off the screen and it won't undo or finish the shape without me locking the line to the first point first. And uh, I've noticed that when I take my hand off the screen in process of creating a shape in Photoshop, it just finished the shape automatically. After I finished the whole piece, I searched for some kind of solution. I thought there should be some command, probably. And I've learned that I can also press spacebar in process to scroll the canvas, but still without letting go of the mouse button. Photoshop is a lot about commands. There is not always going to be a button for some kind of action. Sometimes it's just a command you need to know, or at least write them down and put somewhere next to you to check it when you need. Because it's kind of annoying to always get to the edit menu to undo or redo. Also, I've noticed that there's no more than 20 or so options to undo, while in Procreate you can undo till you get to the point you started your session with. Anyway, commands. For example, to rotate or transform some area, I'm selecting needed area with lasso tool or any selection tool. Then I press Ctrl plus T. This command allows me to select free transform tool. If I want to transform selected area without keeping the form, I hold shift in process of transforming it. And when it's done, I press enter to end editing mode. And I also press Ctrl plus D to deselect the area. In Procreate, I open Selection Tools menu at the top right of the menu. After I select needed area, I pick the area with cursor and here's the menu of how I can change this selected area. 
The difference between Procreate and Photoshop interfaces is especially noticeable here. Procreate gives you all the tools and immediately shows you what and how you can use. It's simple. With Photoshop, you may need to be more inventive. Anyway, let's get back to the process. After filling the shape with one color, I always create new layer above this main layer and I'm gonna make this layer to be a clipping mask layer to add other main colors. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but I've been told a lot that one of the biggest difficulties of Photoshop is layers. And I can clearly see that it's not, at least for me it's not, and it's such a really effect actually. I can create a clipping mask layer as I usually do at this stage. I can experiment with different kinds of layers too. I can change the opacity of a layer. I can do everything I usually do in Procreate app. Working on clipping mask layer, I use default round brush in Photoshop and my custom brush in Procreate app. Shading in Photoshop took me a while compared to Procreate because there is no blending tool. There is no blending tool in Photoshop. Help! I surely didn't expect that. My whole process, a half of process of rendering in Procreate is this tool, so it was a real challenge to me to learn to work with just soft brushes with right colors to create nice gradients instead of just blend it all over. Because of that, uh, shading part in Photoshop took me a lot longer than my usual shading process in Procreate. At the moments when I usually would just blend it a little, I needed to learn to work with opacity instead, with the pressure on pencil with right colors and it didn't work well at first but that's not too hard if put some more time and effort to get used to it but it does affect the process i needed to work more carefully i was afraid to put different colors as i did in procreate with bright eyeshadows i wanted to create the whole volume shading part first because i knew there's no way i can fix it later with a blending tool the texture i mean these kind of spots some brushes can leave if the pressure isn't right there's no way to get rid of that without blending tool it was a real challenge, but creating different color gradients, playing with colors and opacity was a fun part too. The only thing, picking right colors in Photoshop is way more complicated for me. See this tool on Procreate Color Wheel? When you pick a color, it shows you the previous color. This way, I usually compare values and easily find similar, almost the same by darkness colors of different hues. And there's just no such option in Photoshop. And after using Procreate Wheel for a while, it's kinda uncomfortable for me. Picking needed color takes a lot longer. I always need to try a color color on Samaria with previous color to check the darkness now. Anyway, working with new app inspired me, it makes me want to try more different features and just experiment a lot. I want to try new things I wouldn't try with Procreate just because I'm so used to it, to the process and tools and the app in general. I guess that's not gonna work for everyone, but for me it worked magically. I was in some kind of block lately, no ideas, no inspiration, but just studying new app and trying something new helped me to take a long breath, slow down and just enjoy the process. And since the screen is much bigger than my iPad, I wasn't afraid of over-rendering this time, I actually even wanted to over-render it. It was way more fun adding these tiny little details than it usually is with Procreate. Screen isn't usually large. I just want to zoom in as close as possible and work out every single tiny detail. Meanwhile, rendering in Procreate was quite usual. <laughs> A lot of blending tool and bright highlights. But it was much more interesting than usual this time because I was working on Procreate painting after I already finished Photoshop 1. Yeah, I don't draw them two at the same time, so it's kind of not fair to compare the results since Procreate 1 is literally my second attempt. And uh, I'm not even talking about how much I'm used to the app comparing to Photoshop. When I was editing this video for Ya, yeah, I was quite shocked how similar the colors I pick for the paintings are, because uh, it was not a palette and I, I'm not using the dropper tool. So after studying the shapes and rendering it all in Photoshop, I'm doing it all over in Procreate, but feeling much more comfortable in process and experimenting with brush strokes and shapes more freely, because here's my lifesaver blending tool and endless undo option in case I need it. 
no backup layers. Usually I'm using no more than three or four. I hate this feeling when something is lost in these layers. I know I can just name them and stuff, but I just don't like to work this way. I'm comfortable with just a couple of layers, no more. And when it was time to work with hair and procreate, I cheated. Yeah, I've got some stamps for hair I thought I want to use today. I also corrected the shape by erasing some parts of hair, which I didn't do in Photoshop because <laughs> I got really confused because uh, of many layers and my experiments with different kinds of layers. I just honestly, I haven't figured out how to merge it all to erase some parts of the shape or to be able to work with hair on new clipping mask layer. So in Photoshop I worked on just new normal layer a bow and after working with soft brush I needed to erase it where it needs. I feel like a complete newbie here. Sometimes it's really uncomfortable. Anyway, from now let's check both of the processes. I'm actually even curious to see how much of a difference there's gonna be. I don't know about you guys, but I like the Photoshop one more so far. The colors are so much deeper, I've been working on shading more careful and it's noticeable now. And the hair color, this deep blue is just... Uh, okay, I didn't expect I'd like Photoshop painting more, <laughs> but I do. And as you remember, I wasn't painting these two at the same time and when I was working on Procreate one, I knew how good this hair can look like and I wasn't satisfied with it yet. So I started to work more on tiny little hair and glossy effect, bright highlights. I tried to make it look as good as I remember Photoshop hair was at this stage. And at the end, I think it turned out even better than Photoshop ones. But to be fair, let's remember that it's my second try. It's the second time I'm painting this exact same hair. So yeah, I guess that's also a big part of why it came out even better than I expected. Now it's time for finishing rendering part. And at this stage, I want to create even more dimensional shape. It's usually about finishing touches, such as reflexes and bright highlights. In Photoshop, it was actually pretty good already. So I decided to play with curves a little. Curves in Photoshop are a little less newbie friendly. If in Procreate you just go to curve settings and it changes the layer you're currently working with, in Photoshop curves affect all the layers below. So first I need to make it to be a clipping mask to work only with one needed layer below. I worked with a copy of the main layer to be able to erase this layer a little where it needs to keep needed amount of this glow on the main layer below. Meanwhile, finishing rendering in Procreate means blending tool, at least for me. So I just did everything as I usually do. I blend some areas with big round smooth brush. It's important to also keep some clear lines to avoid complete blur effect. And when it was time for jewelry, I used lasso tool to create the shapes. In Procreate it turned out well soon enough, but with Photoshop... Well, I was struggling a lot. I just didn't like how it turns out. I was starting over again and again. I also used brushes, some brushes to create more complex shape, which I never do in Procreate. I was trying different approaches till finally it came out well. For now, it's only background and some effects left to finish the pieces. So let's check how it goes at this stage. I don't know. I like them both, but differently. While Photoshop one is much more bright and fluffy, Photoshop is giving me more calm vibes. And it's also interesting that I started out with literally just one same sketch and now it's two completely different girls. They look like it's one character, but from different universes or something. I like that they're giving such different vibes. Now let's finally get to the finishing part. It's background, textures, effects, my favorite part of just having some fun. I thought this blue, purple and pink is gonna be great for background. I created a gradient with big soft brush with low opacity. And then I started to experiment with different textures. I saved a lot of pictures with this kind of shiny textures with glitter. I uploaded it as new layer and tried different variations of layers. I erased it where it needs, experiment with curves. I wasn't looking for something specific. I thought I'll just know when I see that that's exactly what I needed here. 
I also added some finishing touches, more bright colors to hair, highlights, some random hair, eyelashes. To be honest, uh, I think I over-rendered it. When I was creating this video and looking at this painting at different stages again, I realized that I liked it more at the previous stage. Meanwhile, in Procreate, I was giving it the same finishing touches. Textures of the cloth, background colors, some tiny details too, and... Um, and here they are. Here. Somewhere here, I guess. Photoshop painting took me 8 hours. Procreate 1 took me 2 hours. I was spending a lot of time just studying the interface and learning to work with tools on Photoshop. Plus, it took me a while because it was my first attempt and Procreate was the second. If I have to what I would for Procreate 1, even though it's not fair to compare considering my experience in apps, the final piece I did in Procreate app looks better for my taste. And what do you say? Which one is your choice and why? Also, let me know which app you use, you prefer and why, because here I'm not actually trying to decide which app is better, I'm just uh, sharing my opinion, my experience and uh, I wish you do too. Anyway, that's it. See you in the next video, guys.